Uh-huh. Also from Christian Church and Christian. Yes. Amen. Yes. My name is uh, uh, Pastor Nana Pia from Faith Fellowship Chapel International. Senior Pastor also. But as you can see, we have a lineup of senior pastors here. So you can count on the quality of what's coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you. Okay. Last week we were talking about uh, the safety. Actually, we titled it the safety. No, we said how safe and clean is the prophetic ministry today. But it was just a way to, to set the ball rolling. Um, and so we, we actually we struggled, a, not struggle, but we kind of uh, we went around the topic trying to define really what the prophetic ministry is, the prophetic office, and the, and the prophetic ministry in general. And we kind of uh, settled on uh, uh, the fact that, okay, that is, I mean, th- there is a prophetic of it, but there is also uh, a prophetic unction which comes from people, and we distinguish that from, of course, uh, uh, the prophetic uh, offices which are in the scriptures, which have been canonized in the scriptures, and that uh, we wanted to eventually between the prophetic utterances which are coming out today uh, in contrast to what has been canonized in scripture. So we wanted to kind of, we, we, we touched on all those areas uh, before going further. And so now that we have a consensus, uh, we will want to delve into the topic further. Now, the first question I would like to throw to my panelists today is, uh, what are the primary functions of the prophet to the people he or she is called? What are the primary uh, functions. I mean, in other words, what is the prophet supposed to do to the people he's called? That, of course, you know, we didn't touch on that last week. It's not even on the, you know, yeah. sample questions, but uh, uh, can we clarify that what is the prophet supposed to do to the people he's called to? Yeah, uh, basically, I believe that um, yes, um, the, the 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 prophet in the New Testament he um, gives. The will of God. He he, he presents revelation, you know, in, in, in prophecy. Okay. You know, w- what God has for His people. Okay. And, and and this gift, this office, is to profit the believers, the church. Okay. And so basically, that is what the prophet. Prophet is a so it's a spokesman for God. Yeah, in, in the same. Okay. Case. Gentlemen, do you have something to add or to uh, to to, to uh, take I, away? I believe basically that is that, that is it. Speaks the minds of God, uh, the mind of God to the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll also say, um, I'll also address it. Um, he, that prophet is called uh, to mm-hmm. bring the people into repentance. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, to admonish the church. Yeah. Uh, number three, um, also to um, redirect them of their focus to of Christ. That is the center point of the prophetic ministry. So the other day I said, any prophecy that is given without uh, without bringing Jesus mm-hmm. into the center fo- uh, center point, yes. it, it's a fallacy. It's questionable. It's questionable. Huh? So uh, the, the role of the prophet, I think, is to direct the people back to Christ and also to bring them to awareness of the will of God, as uh, our pastor said. You have said something really tough on her because I'm looking at something I've been looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I began by asking, what... What are the functions of the prophet? The prophet. Why did God give a prophet in the first place? Is it to entertain the people, or is it to bring them back to their focus as far as their uh, relationship with God is concerned? Now, if we do, we all agree what he just said. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. Then, uh, can we now analyze the prophetic ministry, the prophetic office which we have today, in contrast? with what it's supposed to be. As an office, uh, giving direction to people, bringing them back to God, you know, when they are going astray, and also letting them know the mind of God for the people, for the individual or for the nation. How do we contrast the prophetic ministry, the prophetic office, as we just had, with the way we have it today? Yes, yes. Clark, I think you want to. Yeah, the way we have it today, I would say yes. Still, we have prophets who are really playing that role. You know, like in um, uh, First Corinthians fourteen twenty five, just as he said, mm-hmm. uh, there are some prophecies that comes that makes you realize, you know, your sins, convicts you of your sin, reveals some things that, you know, causes you to realize that 
uh, um, uh, God knows me. Yes. This is the time that I need to let go my sins. Absolutely. And there are some that you know I I would say they are abusing it. Yeah. You know, uh, some genuinely give the prophecy, yes. but they end up, you know, using it for their own profit. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we are having genuine, you know, presentation of it, mm -hmm. but an abuse, mm -hmm. and we are also having uh, a presentation that is totally not not in scripture. Mm -hmm. So it's in three ways. We have those who are very genuine and very much, you know, in the line, doing exactly what scripture demands, mm -hmm. and we have those who are gifted. They genuinely give the prophecy, but they abuse that gift. And we also have those who are totally out of line. And so I see, you know, in our time, this is what is going on. Okay. Um, so do we have prophets like that in our city today who are in line with the, the, the calling, the, 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 you know, the mandate God has given to us as a prophet ministry? Of course, I mean, I don't expect us to mention it, but do we, do we have the confidence that there are people with a prophetic ministry who are leading the church sure. in the direction it should go? And they are a voice that is recognized, a voice of authority, a voice of honor, a voice that people can look up to and respect. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yes, go ahead, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs>
the prophetic office is still in operation. Yeah. But our way of living together mm -hmm. that sometimes brings uh, some barriers mm -hmm. because I cannot I cannot say okay this prophet is for all the nation and when he speaks uh, whatever is happening is for all the nation. Mm -hmm. The pastors and the uh, our leaders yeah. they are in, in segments. Yeah. They are in segments. Mm -hmm. More like the Old Testament, yeah. we have one pastor and uh, one prophet for who speaks those. for us with just right yeah. the, the, the nail. Mm -hmm. So the times that we live in also is serving as a barrier. Now mm -hmm. we can have one who is speaking for all oh. people at the same time. Okay. Yeah, but you finish up and then uh, I wanna let the uh, Master Wilford here uh, yeah, yeah, so what you're saying. I, 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 uh, yes. I, yeah. I, I agree with that, him in the certain ways, but uh, we, we still have, we still have men of God who are the voice of, of the nation and the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you have not heard mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they are not there. They are there. They're there. Yes, they are there, and uh, I would say. Um, well, if you're free to mention them, it's still like it. We don't okay. want to offer, mm -hmm. offer they, they, anybody they, they, or... Yeah, or, they, they are there. They are there. Okay, these, are, leave somebody up, these are men that inspire us, you yeah. know. They, they are like a role model to us. Yeah. Um, I would say, um, um, Archbishop Duncan Williams mm -hmm. is one of the people, you know, um, who, when he stands and he declares something, it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have watched him declaring certain things and coming to pass, you know. Um, uh, there was some time in, um, uh, in Ghana, uh, uh, there was some chaos, and I, I saw this man of God yeah. rising up in the nation, and he spoke, and this thing became silent, you know. And I believe we still have them, even in Amsterdam.